Hey guys, this is Kagome, and I wanted to talk to you guys about the balancing lymphedema with everyday normal life. Now, I'm not a doctor or a um, therapist or anything like that, but this is just something um, I've been doing with, so but I share. Okay, so there's a few things you need to know. This is this specifically, I'm talking about lymphedema in the arm from breast cancer specifically because that's what I had, breast cancer, and that's what I have now, lymphedema in my right arm. So um, I'm going to go through a few things that we normally do daily um, to kind of give you a little tips on how I deal with things to try to keep the swelling out of my arm the best way I can. So um, first of all, when I wake up in the morning, my arm is already really stiff and in pain. I know that they do have night um, garments that you can wear. I don't have one of those. Those are like $200, I believe. can't really afford that to sleep in. It would be great because they keep your arm out straight. So, uh, And at night, when if you, if you are swollen up at night, you can prop your arm up on a pillow. Just try to keep it elevated so that it will help the fluid drain back down. So you'll be sleeping on your back. So. If you're not a back sleeper, it might suck a little bit. And as soon as you get up in the morning, um, you'll be a little stiff. But what I do is I immediately drink a giant glass of water to help get everything flowing in my body. Because right now I'm like, ugh, I am so bloated. Like you can see it on my face and everything. I am just so bloated. I just look like a freaking hog. But um, that's what I do normally. I'll, as soon as I get up, I go to the kitchen and drink a glass of water to kind of get everything moving to get my body moving because it can be hard to get started early in the morning. Now as far as getting dressed, um, take your time. Take your time. Don't wear garments that are tight on um, the swollen arm or extremity or whatever you might have. Don't wear tight clothing. Don't wear jewelry like tight rings. Um, this is the hand I've always worn rings on and now I can't wear them. But I can wear some very loose bangles, the ones that snap on. I can't really slide my hand into the full hoop bangles anymore. So be aware of that because that will restrict the flow of things and you will swell and you don't want that because it can be very painful and it is. So take your time in the morning when you're getting ready. Allow yourself enough time if you have somewhere to go, somewhere to be. Get up early enough so that you can get things done uh, with your personal self, your hygiene and everything else. Make sure you always keep your arm nice and clean and dry. You don't want to get any infections. You always want to be able to look over your arm and see everything and make sure everything is good. Um, Wear sunblock in the summertime. The summer is coming. The spring is already here. You need to wear sunblock. The sun will burn your arm and it does hurt when you're out in the sun. So you need to either wear sunblock or you need to cover up. Uh, another thing I usually do in the winter is I do all of, um, vitamin E oil and aloe vera. I rub that on my skin. That makes it like super soft in the winter. But in the summer, I just put the aloe vera gel and then the sunblock on. I don't want the oil to like cook me. So it's one thing you can do for that. Okay, um, as far as your chores, I know before I had lymphedema, I could go through and like I could just clean everything immediately and be done with it and on my way. Now I can't cannot do that. If if you do too much with your arm, that'll cause swelling as well. So may not be able to clean your whole house in one day. You may have to like go in stages like you do downstairs today, upstairs tomorrow, you know, just wipe down your bathroom a little bit each day and then at the end of the week do like a really good cleaning. Just so um, I keep um, in my bathroom, I keep the disinfectant wipes so I can wipe down things. And um, for my shower, I don't get down on my hands and knees and like scrub the shower. I actually use a 
sponge mop in my shower. Like this, this the clean one. I'm taking the mop off the end right now because I'm doing a refill. But I use the sponge mop. I spray my shower down really good and let it soak. And then I use the sponge mop to clean my shower so that I'm not down here scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing. Because it's just no good. And you have to like lean a lot and you have a lot of pressure on your arm. And it's just um, it's not very good for you. So any little thing you can do to help keep the stress off your arm is really good. It's okay if you need to sit down and rest after you do your dishes and mop. Just sit down and put your arm up so that you can rest. It's better to do that than to be out of commission for a couple of days because you cleaned up everything. And I can say I've, I've been there when I live in an apartment, so whenever we have inspections, like you gotta do this whole big cleaning and it's kinda hard. I have a son, he's nine and he's messy. And that brings me to another point. If you do have kids, yes, they are extremely messy. Let them, well, make them help you as much as possible. Let them do um, little things that kids can do, like cleaning their rooms. Let them do that. Let them help you fold towels. Let them help you um, keep the bathroom tidy, like with the disinfectant wipes and stuff like that. Let them help you vacuum and different things like that that they can do. They can help you take out the trash. And sometimes you just, the trash can be too heavy and you just don't, you have to drag it to the dumpster. And so you just have to be really careful about that. Um, um, when you're in your living room and you decide to clean, if you want to move furniture, it's better that you have someone move it for you because you just do not want to be lifting with your arms at all. Sometimes I have to like slide my couch over a little, so I'll use I'll use my knee and, and I'll just lift up on like the arm with my knee a little bit and slide it. Just a little, you know, just to kind of get it where I need it. Um, never lifting on my arms as far as shopping goes. Even if you're grocery shopping, even if um what you have is light, it's best not to get one of those little baskets. I made that mistake many times. It, is, it gets heavy really fast. So now a lot of grocery stores have like those really little carts. So you can use that instead. Don't be embarrassed about like, we have a juice and a loaf of bread in here. Juice can be heavy if you're carrying it around. So um, use your carts. Take your carts to the car. Don't get all your bags out and carry them. Just push the cart to the car and put it in the the cart holder when you're done. Um, when you get your groceries home, you're going to have to carry them in the house. I know you're going to want to lift up on everything at once. I've done that. I've hurt myself. Just just don't do it. You're just going to have to make more trips. Um, and use your other arm for the heavier items. This is my dominant arm but it's not strong, it's not as strong as it used to be. I don't, to, in my opinion, most people are not gonna have the same amount of, amount of strength in their upper body anymore if they end up with um, lymphedema in the arms. I was a lot stronger before I had lymphedema, and now I am very weak even with doing stretches and the lymphedema exercises that the therapist gives you and things like that. Because you just, you really cannot, you can only do so much with your arm to try and build upper body strength, you know. But it is important to do something because you want to be able to carry something. So um, when you're exercising and things like that, try to stay off of it. Don't do like push-ups and stuff like that. Like if you really want to do some push-ups, try doing wall push-ups. You might be well beyond that, but if your lymphedema is really active and aggravated, you're not going to want to get on the floor and start doing push-ups and um, planks and stuff like that. Get up on the wall, just lean against the wall and like push, you know, because you don't want to make it any worse than what it is. And if your lymphedema is active right now and you're just rolling all the pieces, just sit down somewhere, put your arm up and get the flow going, pump your fist, 
pump your fist to try to get the fluid out of there and, you know, lift it up and pump, 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 pump as much as you can. Rub up, not down, not down. Rub up because you want the fluid to come up, out, and out of there. So rub up to kind of help it along. Make sure you're wearing your sleeve. Oh, another thing. I'm having issues with um, plunging. My upstairs bathroom is like, I don't know what's wrong with it. With it. The toilet is like, the toilet keeps clogging. I don't care. I'm about to tell my son not to use it anymore. And like, you can throw one piece of toilet paper in there and it clogs. So, I've been having to plunge it. And I rent. So I've been calling uh, maintenance like once a week. And then I've been having to plunge between. And I'm really tired of calling maintenance. So, and it does, really does put, it does a lot to my arm. My arm was, I was in a lot of pain this morning from plunging. And the thing is still stopped up. But when you do plunge, make sure you're wearing your sleeve and a rubber glove over your sleeve to keep the pressure out. Um, I was really trying to plunge with both hands so that all the pressure wouldn't just be on my dominant arm. You know, what can you do? Sometimes you gotta, you just gotta do it. But after I did that, I was unable to do any other stuff, so I haven't even cleaned the shower and stuff like that. Um, Always protect, protect your arm, baby your arm, baby, it's just your little baby, just baby it. Sometimes you gotta baby it, you know, you gotta take care of yourself. I'm not saying take your arm and stick it here and like never do anything. I'm saying don't go crazy because you're gonna hurt yourself. You are, believe me, I know, you are gonna hurt yourself. Okay, um, driving. I can drive. I cannot drive for long periods of time. After after a while, after maybe like 40 minutes of driving, my arm starts to swell up and my chest will start to hurt. I'll get cramps in the area where I had radiation and stuff like that. I'll get chest cramps and things like that and I'll have to pull over. So, if you're going to be planning on trips, remember that that might be a possibility Try to get somebody that can help you drive or take another mode of transportation. Like sometimes we take the train to where my sister used to live. We take the train, my son and I. So I wouldn't have to drive at all. Because um, it can be very frustrating and painful. A lot of people say that lymphedema is not very painful. It's just like nagging, I guess. I, I don't know. They just, they don't associate it with pain. But, um, I know in my case, I have lots of joint pain. My elbow hurts all the time. My inner elbow, my shoulder, my wrist, my hand, everything. All that tends to hurt. And if I keep it folded too long like this, it'll hurt. So if I'm holding something up or like trying to read like this, sometimes I have to stretch it back out. You know, you can't just like sit around like this with your arm folded. You gotta kind of stretch it out. Or you're gonna know that when you need to stretch it out because it's gonna hurt. Even if you forget, it's going to hurt. It's going to remind you. So, um, let me see. Those are a few things. Uh, when you're fixing your hair in the morning, try to do simple styles. Uh, depending on your range of motion, I can get my arm up now. I can get it up now. So, um, I can do my hair pretty well. But I can't hold it up for a long period of time. Like this right here, this is a wig, but um, I still have to do my real hair under here. I have to try to get it back and like uh, I put it in little, I guess you call them braids, and there's just two of them because I really don't have the energy to do more than that. So I'll do two, one on this side and one on this side, and like to just to have under my wig so hair is not everywhere, and you gotta keep your hair healthy. But any more than that, and my arm will immediately start hurting. I'll be like, when I get to the second one, I'm hanging like, ugh, ugh, <laughs> you know? So um, be aware of that. Take your time. Do simple styles. Uh, you know, don't be ashamed to wear your wig one day if you don't have the energy to do your hair. Rest, rest, rest. I know if you have a busy schedule, which I do sometimes, it's hard to get rest. 
But I find that if I don't get enough rest, my lymphedema, excuse me, my lymphedema acts up a lot more. So, rest is a key thing. Lots of water is a key thing. Uh, movement in your arm is good. Movement, but not a whole lot of repetitive movement. So, like, if you're doing this, as in, like, scrubbing or something like that, that's not good. Um, but keeping active is good because it'll help get the flow of the fluid out. So, if you're, you know, if you start acting up or whatever, just do a few pumps and, you know, have your arm out. It's good to exercise it, but just don't overdo it. I wouldn't recommend using a weight if you're going to exercise your arm. Exercising with lymphedema is more or less just like up and down and or yoga. Yoga is probably the best thing if you have lymphedema. That's what I do. A lot of stretching, stuff like that. And a lot of, um, you know, like things around the house is what I do. I don't really go outside my house to exercise. I like walking, like marching and stuff like that. So um, it depends on how far along you are in treatments and therapy and how your body feels about everything. Each person is different. Listen to your body. If something hurts, stop, sit down, chill out, you know. There's no, there's no reason to set yourself back. There are lymphedema specialists. My doctor actually said when, the next time I came to her that um, they were going to look into a new specialist in the area because we kind of like limited resources around here. And I've been having lots of issues with lymphedema and I have not had any therapy since first um, had surgery so she's gonna look into that hopefully I can get in there and get some lymphedema therapy and when I do clean and things like that and do stuff outside I don't wear my fancy sleeve I wear my ugly brown sleeve that looks ugly I wear that and I wear gloves to protect myself you don't want to get scratches and needles and pricks and like you do not want to cut yourself um this side is, is easily infected so you want to be really careful you can't just go outside and start digging with your bare hands and stuff like that when you're out digging in dirt or whatever you're going to be doing or you know even um scrubbing even cleaning your house you want to wear a glove on your hands to you know keep it safe but I think that's about I think that's about it that I can remember if you have any more questions or suggestions about living with lymphedema feel free to contact me feel free to comment below I don't mind suggestions I love suggestions I love things that make my life easier so do that and I will talk to you guys soon Oh, 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 I want to tell you guys, the Survivor Celebration is this weekend. I'm excited. It's a good Friday. I've never been. Um, I got the invite in the mail. It's like, oh, it's a red carpet affair. You can invite some people to just, like, reserve your spot or whatever. So I reserve a few spots for some family members, and hopefully I get to go, and I hope it's, like, lots of fun. So I just wanted to tell you guys about that. I hope, um... Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're staying healthy and living positive and everything else. All right. That is all for me. Bye.